Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. with Reverend Roger Paul. You're live with us here at the Solid Word International Ministries, live from beautiful Barbados, broadcasting via Facebook or Facebook page, The Solid Word with Reverend Roger Paul. Of course, we are the Solid Word International Ministries. And yes, we broadcast internationally. And wherever you are, we want to say thank you so much for joining us here every Sunday, as you do, whether you're live with us or you're watching the replay Hey, let us know where you're watching from, okay, or listening, you know. Well, I like to listen to things while I while I do my housework and so on and be empowered in that way. And if you're doing that, we say thank you so, so much. I am Crystal J. Paul, and it is my my honor, my pleasure to to welcome you here on this, the final day of January, the final Sunday, sorry, wow. of January. Wow. <laughs> the final Sunday of January is the 29th day. Can you believe it? And we're wow. giving God thanks for all he's done Amen. so far in the 29 days for Amen. 2023. And we hope you're having a great, great year so far. Well, as we have been doing, I've been ministering a song for you before Reverend Paul comes and deals with part three. I said to him, can you imagine part three already? Mm. <laughs> part three of this beautiful series, The Needed Church. And right. this is a needed message, a very relevant message for this time. Even as we, we're, hearing, we're hearing more about Great self for 2023 and going bigger and all the things. So I pray this will be a blessing to you. And even as we go bigger, do greater things for God in, in 2023 when this needed church, I pray that this song I'm about to sing a cappella because, of course, as you know, we, know, we want to comply with Facebook's regulations and not be muted. All right. So I'm going to sing this song a cappella for you. It's a beautiful hymn and it's my favorite hymn, actually. And I pray that it would be a blessing to you. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless. Praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let And beautiful for thee. Take my silver and my gold. Not a might would I withhold, Lord. Take my intellect. Every part 
just choose my favorite verse take my voice and let me sing Amen. always only for my king take my lips and let them move with messages filled for thee filled with messages from thee lord take my will and make it thine lord it shall be no longer Take my heart and as thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be your royal throne. Take my love, my Lord. so much for that beautiful hymn. The Romans tells us that we should present our body as a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, accepted unto God. Mm -hmm. It's our reasonable service. When you think of all the things that God has done for us, you think of who he is to us. Man, our reasonable service does not even seem to be reasonable. Right. You know, it's like, it's like somebody giving you a whole four-course meal and exchanging that for a quarter of a biscuit. <laughs> it does not even compute. Mm. Boy, we belong to him. He has given it all for us. And friend, everything we do in this life should be done to bring honor and glory to his name. I want to welcome you this morning to the solid word. We are so happy that you are here with us this morning. We know you could be anywhere doing something else this morning, but thank God you're here with us on the solid word, sitting around his word and feasting at his table. I pray, my friend, that this time you spent here with us would be a blessed time. That it will affect your living here for the Lord in a positive way. Thank you so much for praying for us. Those of you who have been praying for us and and uh, asking God's blessings on us as we step forward in this brand new year. We're looking for the great things from God and doing great things for him. Please continue praying for us. We are looking very much forward to getting into our ministry. Uh, we want to thank God for uh, just choosing us. And, and working through us, even through the solid word. Please continue to pray for us uh, in our book series. We thank God so much for that ministry. And pray that you will 
Uh, to pray that these books be a blessing to a lot of young men and women, around, young boys and girls, sorry, around uh, the world. Uh, help us to share it with, 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 with those who we know need it. And what, what, are, what are these books? They are, they are books for children using the characters of Finley the Flying Fish from Barbados and Poro the Polar Bear from uh, the South Pole. And uh, these are the books we have here. Is any here? But there are also books like uh, Being Ananias for Saul and other books, Christmas from the Christmas series and from the Easter series. And we have a lot more uh, to be published. Would you keep praying for us, please? Praying for these books. I encourage you to uh, buy some of these books for your children, for uh, your school. Or your children's put in the library. These books are teaching children principles, good principles to live by. Okay, um, don't follow bad friends, helping others, or obey your elders. Okay, and on these things. Okay, and so you 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 can do that, please, and help us to share these books. Thank God for that. Please also pray for our music ministry. We thank God for that and for the songs he has enabled us to write and uh, songs of upliftment, songs of encouragement. You can go to my wife's website, and that is ChristaJPaul.com, ChristaJPaul.com. There you'll find our songs there, many songs. The latest one we had was Find Myself in You, okay, and uh, oh, that's a Powerful, powerful message in a song, okay? And, of course, there's Risen. And all these beautiful songs we have there, you can find it there on our website. And also e-books are there for your uh, encouragement. You can find it there also. And the only Believe Empowerment conference recordings are there also for your uh, upliftment and your encouragement. I know you'll be encouraged by that. That's based on one of our songs, Only Believe. And uh, wonderful, wonderful song. You can, oh, I'm the sin because I'm, I'm, I'm the writer, right? No, you can go and find it yourself, okay? Small contributions needed there, and you can get your songs there, okay? Thank you so much for that. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, we are continuing our series in the needed church, the needed church. Uh, what God expects of his church in 2023. I don't know what it was for you last year, but I know that God deserves our best. And he wants you and I, my friend, to improve our game, so to speak, improve what we're doing so we can reach the loss for him. I was telling uh, uh, one of my pastoral friends we had here this week, Pastor Lambert, uh, that we, we, we need to do so much better for God, man. So much better for him. The mediocre thing of just throwing things, things up and hoping it sticks, that is gone, man. When you think of what he has done for us, oh, we need to do much more for him. Today, today, we have so many people out of church because of the pandemic. There are so many unchurched that we need to reach today. And so I hope, my friend, this morning, that you'll get on the ball and get busy for God and put off your procrastination gong and, and get busy. Put on your work clothes and get busy for God. Okay? You have your Bibles. We are in the book of Acts in chapter 4. Acts in chapter 4. Let's read the word of God here from verse 15 to 23. We'll read this morning and then get into the word of God. Acts 4, 15 to 23. If you have your Bibles this morning, let's read together. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, 
they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? That indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifested to all of them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people that us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether is it right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God? Judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have heard seen and heard. When they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorify God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, went to their own company and put it all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. I want to share some thoughts with you today on can't help but speak. Can't help but speak. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much today, O oh Lord God, for giving us life. Lord, Thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us the bread of life. Help us, O oh God, to use this life today to bring glory and honor to your name, to preach this word, to live our lives, even our speech, to bring glory and honor to your name. I pray for those who are listening right now, Lord God, who are watching this service. I pray, O oh Lord God, that there would be encouraged to speak the word of God to this lost world. Not be discouraged. Not be intimidated. Oh God, I ask for the spirit of encouragement right now. Boldness. Confidence. To go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your word. Bless your people. Bless this time. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. When it comes to mission, when it comes to speaking the word of God, what drives you? What gets your blood boiling and your heart pumping? What causes you to remain committed to the cause of Christ? What causes you to say, I'll give it all, all for the cross. There was a certain amount of inevitability in the words found in verse 20 of our text this morning. We cannot but speak. What they were saying is that the only natural thing that will happen after seeing and hearing the things God had done for them is to speak his truth. Prophet Jeremiah faced similar circumstances. In Jeremiah 20, verse 1 and 9, listen what the Bible says. Now, Pashur, the son of Imar, the priest, who was also chief governor of the house of the Lord, Heard that Jeremiah prophesied of these things. Then, then Pashar smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in stocks that were in the high gates of Benjamin, when, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pashar bought Jeremiah out of the stocks 
and said unto Jer then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pashor, but Magar Misabu. For thus said the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends. They shall fall by the sword of their enemies. Their eyes shall behold it. I will, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. He shall carry them away captive, carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of the city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Pashor, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and they shall, and there thou shalt die, and shall be buried there, thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Even one, everyone mocketh me. For since I speak, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was more, was made a reproach unto me. and a derision daily. Then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. This message we share today, my friends, is not our message. Even though at times it does not bring us fame, but reproach, we cannot change it. We cannot stop talking about it. It does not matter, my friend, what effect it has on others. We must speak it. You know, sometimes the flesh wants to give us that nauseous feeling to share the word. Wants us to give up, to quit because of external circumstances. But the living word of God, my friend, this morning, that has been registered into the heart, would not allow the individual, would allow us, to stop talking about it. It's like what I was told by my friend who was here this past week, Pastor Michael Lambert. Told me this week that he was on a mission trip to Africa. And uh, they took him and they were seeing the wildlife when they, and they said to him, don't talk loud. Don't talk at all actually. But don't talk loud. But he told me he could not help himself. What he was seeing was so good. You know, the, the things he was seeing caused his mouth to open up and the words began to flow out of his mouth. He was so excited for what he was seeing. This is the same, my friend, the same idea we have here. No matter how... He tried. It was impossible to remain silent. That's what, the, that's what the apostles were saying here to the leaders that are gathered there with him. You know, man has been trying to destroy the word of God 
because it is offensive to them. It is not the most popular thing to do today because it speaks too much in condemnation of sin and those who practice sin. Can we examine this morning the, the historical challenge to the word of God? This piece was written by a man by the name of Roger Byrne. He wrote this article in the year uh, 2020. And this is what he said. In AD 303, the Roman Emperor Diocletian issued an edict to destroy Christians and their Bible. The persecution that followed was brutal. Oh, over a burnt and extinguished Bible, Diocletian built in his, a, a monument on which he wrote these triumphant words. Estinco nomim Christian oram. The name Christian is extinguished. Diocletian fashioned a medal, a medal which with the engraving the Christian religion is destroyed and the worship of the gods restored. Diocletian's boast was premature though. To say at the least 25 years later Diocletian was dead. The new emperor Constantine dedicated himself to put the New Testament in all the churches of his empire. In fact, Constantine ordered a sizable reward for anyone who would deliver a copy of the scripture to him. The next day, Constantine was offered 50 copies of the word of God. He then commissioned 50 copies of the Bible to be prepared at government expense. Do you imagine Diocletian's stunned face or countenance if he returned to earth today to discover that more had been written about the Bible than about any other thousand volumes combined? The Bible has been translated into more languages than any other volume, and it is and it has been sent into more regions of the earth than any other book. Not only Diocletian, the French philosopher Voltaire, 1694 to 1778, declared in 1776, he said, 100 years from my day, there will not be a Bible in the earth except one that is looked upon by an Aquarian curiosity seeker. One hundred years later, Voltaire died, was dead, and his house was, and his house and press were being used to print and store Bibles by the Geneva Bible Society. In 1778, Voltaire bragged. It took 12 men to start Christianity. One will destroy it. He called the Christ the cursed one. Glisser and Nix observed that only 50 years after his death, the Geneva Bible Society used his press and house mm -hmm. to produce stocks of Bibles. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Approximately 200 years later, after Voltaire's prediction that the Bible would be eliminated from the earth, the first edition of Voltaire's work sold in Paris for 11 cents. On that very same day, in December 24, 1933, the British government purchased an ancient New Testament manuscript Codex Sinaiticus for, for the Tsar of Russia for 500 
thousand dollars. This ancient manuscript, dating about AD 335, 350, sorry, is still highly prized and is on display in the British, British Museum. My friend, this morning, what I'm saying to us is that this holy book that we share and preach from today has more trouble than any other writing in human history. It is still here today in spite of that. One songwriter wrote these words that I think are very stirring. It stirs my heart every time I hear it. He wrote, or they wrote, the Bible stands like a rock undaunted mid the raging storms of time. Its pages burn with the truth eternal and they glow with the light sublime. Bible stands like a mountain towering far above the works of man. Its truth by none ever was refuted and destroy it they never can. The Bible stands and it will forever when the world has passed away. By inspiration it has been given all its precepts I will obey. Bible stands, every test we give it, for its author is divine. By grace alone, I expect to live it and to prove it and make it mine. Oh, the Bible stands, though the hills may tumble, it will firmly stand when the world, when the earth shall crumble. I will plant my feet on its firm foundation for the Bible stands my friend they are still trying to destroy today but it stands Amen. my friend it will forever stand and i encourage you this morning my friend to hold on to that word never stop talking about it no matter what people say historically in our second point this morning my friend there's a challenge against the word in the book of Acts. They told the disciples, hey, don't speak anymore in this name. Don't use this name anymore to speak. This name that the disciples says is the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What is most interesting about this scenario, about this about this passage is the elite crowd that came together for these simple for what these simple fishermen were doing what were they doing they healed a, a lame man acts 4 14 tells us that this man whom they saw every day as they go to the temple begging arms outside the gate beautiful this lame man is now standing with them in the temple and they could say nothing against him. The folks gathered there on that fateful day were not just your ordinary folks. Luke makes a point to, to list out these ones who were at the high end of society. Acts 4, 5 the Bible says, and it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and elders and scribes and Annas, and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and many as were of the kingdom of the high priest were gathered together in Jerusalem. There were the council of the Jewish religious and civic elders. As I said last week, who were meeting to decide what to do with Peter and John. The Sadducees may have been the official rulers of the Jewish affairs, but they were a minority party. They could only, they could govern only through the Sanhedrin Council, which is the Supreme Court and Senate. 
though the Sadducees made up the majority of the council? Josephus, a Jewish historian, tells us they had differed to the different opinions to the Pharisaic authority. It is important to note, my friend, that the Sanhedrin was comprised of three groups of people. The first, the last week also, were the rulers and high priests. The second were the elders, men of high community standing. The third group was composed of teachers of the law, usually Pharisees and scribes. The Sanhedrin had 70 members, including the high priest. And they were responsible for cases relevant to Jewish affairs. Luke makes mention or made the point that the Sanhedrin, the Sadducean element that was about to condemn the apostle was heavily represented in the Sanhedrin. The early opponents of the gospel message came mainly from the priestly and Sadducean ranks. I want to emphasize again this morning briefly that the mentioning of Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas was there. And this is very important because Luke wants us to see the influence that was there that morning to condemn the apostles. Annas was the high priest for nine years. He had, he had on his and seemed to continue to have great influence many years after his office was over. Caiaphas, he was the son-in-law of Annas. He was high priest for 18 years. He had a title of high priest when the event of Acts 4 took place. This is important. But Annas was of such influence that it seemed he was making all the important important decisions. Whatever the case, Luke calls Annas the high priest, perhaps in the sense of a high priest emergence. I just thought it was very interesting that they would come out to, for these high and well-educated fishermen. I hope you can hear the Sarcasm in my voice. Because they never thought of those fishermen like that. Listen, it is easy for us to get influenced by the elite of our day. To listen to their arguments as to why we should not preach this word. They say it's offensive. Not inclusive. They tell us and they, and, and they proclaim how intolerant Christians are in preaching the word. Logically, and from a humanistic point of view, these arguments are good. But the apostles told them they had a choice here. The choice was not what they were saying alone. The apostle says, we either listen to you or we listen to God. You judge. My friend, this morning, there is always a choice presented to us. We must choose wisely. Think of this. The choice was set before the people of God in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. This is what the Bible says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. And I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that, thou, that both thou and thy seed may live. 
Again, Moses told Israel that they must make a choice between the God of their fathers or the God, the gods that are served on the other side of the river. This is what Joshua 24, 15 tells us. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which are which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is again a choice Elisha gave to those in 1 Kings 18.21. And Elijah said unto the people, And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long will he halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answer him not a word. You see, my friend, we have a choice. We can listen to what those in our world tells us governments we have today who are taking God out of everything we do because you know his teachings are seen to be hindering progress hindering their happiness or we can choose what God says to do and what God left us here to do is to declare his word let us continue my friend this morning to make the right choice and choose to declare and preach his word. Lastly, this morning, why? Why we cannot but speak this word? Why we cannot but speak this word? What got them into trouble? They saw a need, my friend, and knew only Jesus could help. Listen to what the Bible says in Acts 3, verse 1, from verse 1 this morning. Verse 1 and 2, and then 7 to 9. The Bible says, And Peter and John went up into the, together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, and asked alms of them entered the temple. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles, and ankle bone received strength. And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. There he was, asking for something that he might live in the present. Peter and John saw his greater need, that of salvation. There is a great need today, my friend, in our world for the solid word of God. If we do not preach it, if we do not share it, they cannot hear it. Without it, we are seeing lives being destroyed daily. Young men and young women are dying because there are no guidance for them. Most homes are void of God today. Because of a pandemic, 
we had the other day. Most have left the church, getting a great excuse not to go to church. Most churches are not back up to their normal standard as yet. I've seen the dangers firsthand of those who have no guidance. Children become terror to their neighborhoods or their school. I had a mother who came to me when we were doing chapel with the school next to our church. And it really broke my heart because she said, Pastor, I can't sleep properly. I'm afraid. She even complained to the principal of the school next door for a son who went to the school. She's afraid she can't sleep anymore. Why? Because her son threatened to cut her throat while she was sleeping. She's afraid. Well, here's the truth. Here's the truth. This woman never wanted anyone to, never want anyone to touch her child. You couldn't correct her child because she would stand up for him. She would give him whatever he wants. Well, listen, let me tell you this right. The Bible is true. Word of God says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction would drive far from them. She refused to correct her child. Now I witness her just living in thought and she was not playing. He would get on bad and she can't go next to him. Now we would try with him at church. Now, here's the thing. And she would bring him to church because at church he get discipline. He can come next to me. He can come and miss and play those games. I don't play those games, friend. I don't play those games. And so when he's around me, the church, he's a good boy. I'll take care of him. But when a home and a child is not influenced or guided by the word of God, they're destroyed. Six years old. It was interesting governments the world over are putting God out while at the same time blaming the church for not doing much. There is no other name that is able to bring complete healing to ailing souls, my friend. We must get this. Acts 4, 12, this is what the apostles told those who were trying to stop them from preaching this word, preaching in this name. They said, neither is there salvation in any of them. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. This is not our fight, my friend. This is God's fight for the eternal souls of men. We must not stop preaching his word. Amen. Our little suffering here cannot be compared to what awaits us in eternity. We must not be intimidated. We must not be silenced. We have more powerful reasons why we cannot but speak his truth. Let's speak that truth. I know some of you are sharing verses and godly messages on your social media. Praise God for that. You're in the social media today are trying to limit what the Christian gospel is doing and can do. Trying to 
dictate what you can say and cannot say. They call it hate speech. Imagine that. Truths the Bible have laid up before. It's already there. How did demons hate speech when you speak against sin? Sinful practices. When you tell a person that there's a choice of heaven and hell. There's coming a day, friend, when it will be harder than it is today to preach this unadulterated word of God. We have today the freedom, the liberty to preach this word. In some parts, we're not shackled as yet. We can still preach it. Don't stop. As you can see, the reason that they use why it should not be preached. You can see, my friend, the humanistic philosophy comes into play. It plays with emotion. It says to you, you know, if you do that, you're going to hurt so and so. God's intention for his word is not to hurt anyone, but to guide men and women to the truth and to guide them away from danger. From destroying themselves. God's intention my friend. Is not to bring anyone down. But lift them up. And the word of God does that. Gives them a better life. A better way of living. Don't let us stop sharing this word. I love the apostles. Answer. By the way, I can't help but still again the influence that came out to them. These were fishermen. These were men who they considered unlearned and ignorant men. But they took note that they were with Jesus. And look at the counsel that came out. Annas, Annas, he was already retired. These two fishermen, they were doing something to disturb these guys. When you work for Jesus, you're going to bring out all the heavyweights of the evil world against you. And I'm telling you this morning, my friend, don't let that distract you today. Because I'll tell you, like Elijah tell the young man, God open his eyes that he may see those who are for us. Because indeed, those who are for us is more than those who are against us. Keep preaching the word. Let the word of God stir your heart. Move you with boldness. Preach that word. Share that word. Pass on a track. Listen, get busy for God in this year. Do not let evil influence your decision of following God today. May God help you. May God strengthen His church in this year. I don't mean the building. Oh, you know I don't mean the building, right? I always at church. You always think of that church building. But the people, that is the church. May God strengthen his church this year to be bold for him. And to speak because they need to hear. Father, this morning, we thank you for the solid word of God. We thank you for the examples we see in your word. And we ask, oh God, today, a 
that you give every person in the reach of my voice the boldness of Peter and John to speak with confidence about this holy word in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, as we move forward this year, we will go with confidence and we will conquer, Lord God, the ground that has been taken up by the enemy. We will reclaim it. Thank you for what you will do, Lord God. Thank you for the spirit of boldness today. Thank you, Lord God, for all you have done. bless you. We hope to see you next week right here in the solid world. Same place, same time. Invite someone along or share this message with someone. God bless you. See you next week. In Jesus. Take my light and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee, swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, Lord, it shall be no longer mine. Lord, take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be the royal throne, it shall be the Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Lord, take